from Mavstar. Um, just wanted to do a quick vid and show you what we've been up to today and over the last few days. Obviously, uh, you can see the spur gears that are going to go around the outside. There's 12 of them uh, spaced around about 30 degrees each. Uh, we've got magnets on the top ring. I'll just lift it up to show you. And you can see it's a spur gear on the bottom, a large spur gear with some standoffs in there that you can see the brass. And uh, we've obviously, I think I showed you this the other day, uh, the motor of the gearbox on there. And that should be driving the main wheel, which in turn turns uh, these spur gears, which will be attached to DC motors. And then we've got coils that are going to run around the outside, collecting just the excess power off the uh, magnets as they come past it. Uh, the magnets are separated uh, uh, by a small gap, as you can see, but the polarities are reversed by everyone. So you've got north, south, north, south, all the way around. And there's 20 in total, so 10 south, 10 north. And they should be enough to, you know, uh, excite the electrons within the coil and produce some... Uh, secondary electric. So we've got two uh, ways of producing electric. First of all with the spur gears that run around the side attached to small DC motors. Um, I've done a, a little test this morning. I did set the wheel up. Uh, it's not perfectly balanced but it was enough to just see what the output of one of these uh, DC motors uh, can produce. I will say this, voltage wise I haven't done the uh, amps test on them but what I want to do is get them all together running and then do an amps test, see how many milliamps were actually driving as a current. Uh, I'm not so interested at the moment in the volts, but the volts do total up to um, enough to run this motor. Whether the milliamps is enough as well, that will uh, yet to be remain to be seen. Uh, but don't forget, we've also got uh, you know 12 of these coils that are going to go in between each of the spur gear. You know, this is going to be a learning curve. Um, there are other things we can add to the system in order to generate more electricity. But obviously, the more we add, the more weight we add, and therefore the more energy is required. And, you know, we are using a very high torque motor, and you can't stop this motor with your finger when it's going around, um, you know, at its, you know, uh, I would say, not maximum speed, but you know, medium, I'd say somewhere in the middle of its max and minimum, you know, at that range, uh, you can't hold it. So there's plenty of torque being provided to drive this. There are a few little tricks up my sleeve I've got if we need to reduce uh, the mass of the wheel on the motor if it becomes too much. We can add a third ring to the top if we want to and add more coils or even another spur gear and drive another 12 motors. Um, you know, we're, we're just going to experiment from here on out and just make this, uh, first of all, as efficient as possible. And to do that, you know, what we're going to have to do is uh, make sure everything is precise. So the centre of the wheel has got to be perfectly central and every spur gear that goes onto the DC motor also has to be, you know, perfectly centred. Because if it's not, it's going to cause friction and we're going to lose uh, energy as a result of that. Um, I was thinking about having some magnets on another uh, column here that comes up a little bit and on those magnets uh, will be uh, maybe a steel washer on the top and that is just to lift the weight off the uh, motor so that you've got that magnetic attraction onto the steel which is trying to get pull it closer but obviously there will be a bearing uh, drive shaft going onto this and uh, so long as we can reduce the, the mass of the wheel that we've got, you know, we can conserve energy. It is experimental, guys. I know it looks a bit uh, flying saucer-ish, but I think for you know, the time we've spent on this, uh, we've really made some headway. I've produced another uh, ring for the lower mountains, uh, which we're gonna uh, use to put the motor mounts on and the coil mounts there. And uh, really what we're waiting for is the motors. Now I've ordered 35 motors, uh, two different types, one coming tw 20s and the other one coming 15. So I've ordered 15 of the one and 20 of the other. So we've got about 35 motors in total. And we're going to use, uh, we're going to test a load of motors that are on the market. We're going to test stepper motors 
um, brushless motors and we're going to test you know ordinary um, uh, what they're called uh, brushed motors so that we can find out which produces the most efficient energy for our needs on this. Like I said, I could also, if I wanted to, add a secondary wheel on top of, well, another wheel on top of this, so it would be three stacks, and we could have um, like a wind turbine blade on the front, so that, you know, again, we could, have, we could have it mounted that way, as opposed to just, uh, you know, that way. And we could have it then probably weather vaning, so that we could get some uh, extra energy off the wind, if we needed it. So there's, there's plenty of avenues to explore with this. It's going to be like a project uh, we're going to run for a few months and just see where we get with it. And uh, let's see, you know, with a reasonable attempt, how much efficiency we can drive out of this um, and all the modifications that we're going to make over the coming months. So stay tuned with us, guys. You know, I thought I'd just uh, share this with you. And um, links down there if you want to help support us, what else we do on the uh, observatory as well as this. You know, we're trying to tackle some serious problems and, you know, if you're interested in, you know, supporting what we do, then the links are down there. And the only other thing for me to say is, you know, look after your loved ones and I'll catch up with you later. As always, bye for now.